Back home, bars, cinemas and all other entertainment outlets have been closed since March 26, almost two weeks ago. And one of the groups struggling is musicians, those who play in these bars and hotels. We're now joined by jazz pianist, singer, composer and music educator Jeremy Montero. Hi Jeremy. Now Jeremy, it's been nearly two weeks since all entertainment venues were ordered to close. You're an established, well-known musician. How have you been personally affected? Well, you know, actually, there's a lot of work that I do uh, outside playing uh, uh, small gigs in clubs as well as concerts. For example, my 60th birthday concert on June 6th has been postponed to December. And, and also, I was supposed to go and uh, do some recording in Germany in April this month and followed by some shows in, uh, in France, in Paris, Paris. And all that has been cancelled. So uh, I suppose I can say that nearly half of my income has been uh, mm. Taken away. I mean, thankfully, I, I also uh, run the uh, Jazz Association Singapore a charity registered in Singapore, and, uh, and we still are working very hard to come up with programs to uh, be online to continue our mission even during this uh, period of uh, circuit breaker and uh, during during the period of COVID nineteen. Hmm. Well, Jeremy. In addition to that, you know there are tons of um, other up-and-coming and, and or I, for lack of a better word, less successful musicians who are struggling during this period. So what is your advice for them? You know, there are actually today uh, the government announced, uh, the BPM Hing announced some further measures for uh, self-employed people mm -hmm. and uh, persons. Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, this will enlarge the number of uh, uh, freelance, uh, not just musicians and artists, but uh, of all the different uh, disciplines to, to get some help uh, from the government. I think this actually is going to bring up a lot more, um, uh, uh, help a lot more uh, musicians as to whether it's completely appropriate. I think not a lot of people at agencies and so on like NAC will definitely be looking into it. But I think that um, uh, it's, it's the, the first thing is to try and see whether you qualify for, for, for assistance. Mm -hmm. And mm. on the other hand is that, you know, we musicians, so uh, we, must find innovative ways because now we live in this what is known as a VUCA world, right? So not just COVID-19, but things will start to happen which are difficult for the whole world going forward. So uh, we need to, I think, um, look at, at, at ways that we can innovate so that we can monetize our efforts. Right now, many musicians are just doing free live streams and broadcasts. In my case, I've been lucky. We've gotten some support for the Jazz Association Singapore uh, to donations while I'm doing my live stream. But but, uh, you know, uh, our musicians eventually, for example, there's a very easy PayPal link. You can just go on and create, like, for example, if, you're, if your name is Jeremy Montero, you can go and create a paypal.me uh, slash uh, Jeremy Montero. And people can directly click that link and, and, uh, and, 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 and pay you uh, sort of hmm. uh, like a tip box uh, sort of uh, way, you know. And also yeah. uh, Razor, Razor, the company Razor has actually recently done a live stream, a clubbing live stream clubbing as well and uh, mm. they they have actually gotten a really good uh, uh, sort of tip box uh, concept and people are quite generous they know that they can't expect the artists or the, the DJs or the musicians or the other freelancers to work for free so yeah. hopefully uh, the, uh, more of us will go and find innovative, innovative ways of not just providing comfort and soothing the people but also allow the opportunity for the public to, to support us during this time as well Right. Now, Jeremy, I just want to touch on um, another aspect. Now, clients of musicians, you know, they have cancelled or postponed events. Uh, there will be a new temporary bill that will be introduced in Parliament this week to prevent an organisation, say, like a hotel or catering firm from forfeiting a deposit when a function is postponed. Would a similar bill, you reckon, help musicians? Yes, certainly. Uh, you know, uh, of course, if people have paid the deposits and so on and so forth, the, the trouble uh, with us musicians is very often we don't have any formal contracts with our clients in some WhatsApp, mm. everything, you know. And then and, and some of us do have a contract. Uh, and, mm. and my contract, for example, has a cancellation clause, but, you know, there's a, it has a force major clause. But I think uh, this, as much as it is like a force major, I think that there should be a caveat uh, for situations like this, a global pandemic or other mm. uh, disasters where, uh, you know, the, the client... But how do you protect the client? We have to be fair to the client as well, right? I mean, mm. they, 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 I guess that if they pay a deposit, then they may have to profit deposit. But I don't know whether it's fair to expect them to, um, you know, 
to cover an event that doesn't happen, you know. So, right. so it's very hard. I mean, that's a, a whole legal thing, and I think it's a little bit out of my sphere to to comment mm. on that. Mm. Right. Well, Jeremy, you mentioned earlier that musicians are needing to be a bit more innovative right now. So some of them have turned to streaming their concerts or music online. We see that happening overseas, locally as well. So do you think that will be the new norm? And do you think it is a good idea to actually move some of your performances online so that you can reach a wider audience? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. For example, you know, we were planning as Jazz Association Singapore to celebrate uh, International Jazz Day, which is a UNESCO International Jazz Day. And that was meant to happen on the 25th of April. IJD is actually on the 30th, but we like to do our concerts on the weekend so that we get a big crowd. We were meant to do this at the Singapore Botanic Gardens on mm -hmm. 25th of April. Yeah. Uh, however, now uh, my team and I are you know, trying to come up with a way of still commemorating uh, International Jazz Day. Uh, we can't really even do like a live stream with a group of musicians together because that really doesn't observe uh, our safe distancing yeah. uh, uh, policies and guidelines. So... Uh, we are just kind of trying to find a way where we can get our musicians to do something uh, that we can put together for the public to see and still uh, still commemorate this important day. I mean, UNESCO has mm. uh, 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 stated that uh, the 30th April is International Jazz Day and still celebrate International Jazz Day. Mm. Well, Jeremy, on that note, uh, you reposted a video from 2014 of you jamming with Minister Lawrence Wong. Now, it definitely showed us a different side uh, of him. Tell us more about the story behind the video. Well, first, firstly, uh, Minister Lawrence Wong, for those who have had the uh, pleasure of meeting him personally, is a very down-to-earth uh, person who just has no airs about him. And, you know, and uh, his persona as minister is so so much spotitude that he speaks to us when he does the briefings but i know i, I he actually actually is a very very uh, good uh better than semi-professional uh musician as well and I, and uh uh you know he also during his college days used to play you know in his, uh, with his friends and jam with his friends and all that and uh my friend uh, danny Long uh, from Tinto told me that hey you know Lawrence Long is a is a pretty good uh blues guitar player so I was playing at this uh, very small intimate charity uh, fundraiser dinner, uh, and uh, uh, Stephen Riadi was hosting it, and uh, and, uh, and Lawrence Wong was the guest of honor, and uh, there were a lot of people there, and uh, a very small group. It was only like eighty people, but I it's a, it raised like nearly half a million dollars for charity. And uh, someone said to Lawrence Wong, "Hey, you know, why don't you uh, come up and uh, jam with Jeremy?" You know. And then uh, I, I, I kept saying, yeah, why don't you come and join us? And, say, and I asked the people, you know, will you donate more if uh, Minister <laughs> Lawrence Wong comes on? And uh, they, they all shouted, yes, we will. And uh, he came on and he played the blues really well. And then uh, mm. people uh, responded by donating more to the charity. I think it's really nice to see ministers in that light, you know. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it shows a very human side. Right, we well, in an official capacity, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time, Jeremy. Now, we've been speaking to Jeremy Montero, jazz pianist, singer, composer and music educator with more than 40 solo albums to his name. We wish Jeremy all the best.